Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McFree Lava, and this is Let's Play Greece in Victoria 2, number 11. We left off fabricating a Cassis belly against Egypt. We're probably going to just take over Egyptian hail, which is just a single province state of theirs. And then afterwards, we're going to justify against the Ottomans and take over one of their few remaining states. They only have two left, so we'll take over one, and then we'll be able to go to war to annex them the next time around. And that should be very helpful. So what we should do, first of all, it looks like we are back to hemorrhaging money. That is in good part because we are no longer getting war subsidies from all of the great powers of the world. Which does, of course, mean that they are now able to declare war on us as the truce has ended. We're also able to declare war on them, which is how we're declaring war, or how we are going to be declaring war against the Ottomans. So there's some good and some bad. We're probably going to end up in, uh, well, just in wars against the rest of the world with time. In fact, I'm pretty surprised that we didn't end up facing massive wars to dismantle our empire at the end of the last session, or really just throughout the last session. Uh, yet for whatever reason we just didn't have to deal with that then, which was pretty nice. Uh, moving forward though, it, it's bound to happen I think. Although perhaps our military is just so powerful and so amazing that no one in the world is going to try, although I don't really think that that's something that we should be basing our plans around, although it may potentially prove to be true. At any rate, we are hemorrhaging money and that's not very good. And let's see, we can probably decrease the opinion um, the Persians have for anyone else. It doesn't look like they actually like anyone else, so we'll just increase their relations of us. And we have 76 days until we can go to war against the Egyptians. We will pull one of our army units over to hail or over to some state adjacent to it. And we have enough forces near their capital that we should just be able to overwhelm them there. And just typically abroad. Let's see, we have all the army techs we need right now. We'll go ahead and keep getting industrial technologies. And we really should work our way through the commerce tree at some point in the near future. Looks like the Ottomans are having a communist rebellion, although it's incredibly weak and probably not going to turn into anything. Alright, so yeah, we'll just kind of keep going with that. Looks like we can add Hejaz to our sphere of influence. I really don't want to do that, though. We'll just decline their opinion of someone else. And it is about time that we remove the Ottomans from our sphere so that we will be able to declare war on them later on as we only have about 19 days left before we declare war against the Egyptians. And afterwards we have a bit of an opening. I believe we could justify against the Spanish next, and we do need to take Yemen away from them. So first of all we'll go ahead and immediately justify our war to acquire a state from the Ottomans. Next thing we'll go ahead and declare war taking over Egyptian hail if we're able. If we're very lucky, our jingoism will be up high enough that we can take over another state simultaneously, although that's more than I would be willing to uh, hope for. Egypt is mobilizing because that's something they're able to do now that they're civilized. Cut down to size against Jodhpur, which we're not going to do because cutting people down to size doesn't actually help very much. We'll conduct, we will conduct real investigations because we are a just regime and the second most, uh, well, the second best empire in the world at the moment. Second only to the Germans, who will hopefully eclipse at some point, just probably not through industry. Can we add a war goal? No. No, and it doesn't seem like we'll be able to in anything resembling the near future. So we will just peace out with them, move our forces away. And anyway, so the next thing we'll go after is Cordophon when we get the opportunity. And yeah, after Cordophon, we'll go ahead and declare war against them one last time to annex them and also to liberate them from the Spanish, which will give us all three of these Spanish states in the region. So by doing that, we'll manage to clear up that whole portion of Africa fairly quickly. Now, uh, well, I, we also should really go ahead and justify a war against Sokoto. If we have time before justifying the war, another war against the Spanish, then we'll do that. 
And in fact, we might want to prioritize that to another Spanish war. Or uh, prioritize that over another Spanish war, I should say. So they'll probably be our next targets. We'll move our forces over around them uh, just right now, just to be ready. Oh, look at that. A colonial incident gives us a Cassus Belly on the Spanish. We have a truce with them until a little bit past when we'd be able to do that. So we could just attack them. Ooh, 5% more in favor of Jingoism. Won't really help. It will somewhat, but I don't think we can actually declare a war and then and then add a subsequent Cassus Belly in time for that to work. And we do want to go ahead and take that quickly. Uh, we would lose, I believe, 100 prestige by breaking our truce with them. Although, at this point, 100 prestige isn't very much. We have over 2,000. Well, let's go ahead and take over Spanish Yemen. Oh, only 20 prestige, so that's pretty good. Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and take over Yemen. Lose that prestige for breaking our truce with them, but it's worthwhile. Or at least I hope it will be. If we lose, then it won't be worthwhile. Although that's a fairly obvious statement, and one which really doesn't need any going into. We'll just attempt to not lose. Alright, so we'll bring our battleships out. That should just clear the Mediterranean so we don't have to really worry about anything. Uh, we, will go ahead, we will go ahead and give our people some weighted wealth voting. And that should lower the desire for reform a little bit and also hopefully increase our people's uh, desire for jingoism since their desires for political reform will have been met they may as well want a better stronger empire and we'll go ahead and park one of our navies and then bring it back out to sea that way it gets an admiral all right a bunch of occupations are finishing rather quickly looks like our people the war is not going well enough for us interesting I wonder why alright now it is but we just don't have enough people uh, wanting uh, wanting jingoism so that was a bit of a forlorn hope though it wasn't necessarily so and we're going and engaging the enemy and it looks as though we'll be doing a fairly decent job of it and we'll just move over so they can't really land on us anywhere and in fact, we may as well go all the way to blockading them actively, which should also have the side benefit of making it so that they are more willing to seek peace. So we'll just rush our navy up. And in doing so, bring the war to a more swift conclusion. Ideally, at least. Alright, and we've basically occupied a good portion of the war goal which should push things in our direction with time. And let's see, we are still justifying a war against the Ottomans. That will take quite a while to actually get to the point where we're ready. So what we'll probably do is go against the Ottomans, then go against Sokoto, then by then we should be able to go against Ethiopia, and then by then we might be able to go against Persia. At some point we should really cut some time out to go to war against all the European powers. And we should declare the war so that we're not just facing a uh, defensive sort of situation. If we're able to declare war on Germany for Bosnia, the next logical thing to do, I believe, would be to declare, to declare war on Italy for Dalmatia, and then to declare war on Austro-Hungary for Croatia. And that'll get us a good amount of territory. We could also call in the Romanians, and they'll probably add some of their own war goals. And then in so doing, we'll just kind of advance our, well, our, hege our hegemony. Is that the word? How do you say it? Hegemony? Hegemony? Our hegemony over the region. Uh, we'll keep decreasing people's relations in Sokoto. Uh, apparently we can't because uh, we need to be friendly with them and we are only neutral. So we may end up going to war against France if we declare war against Sokoto, and that would be less than perfectly uh, desirable. Alright, they're not quite ready to give us Yemen. Hopefully with time they will change their mind and we will have them fairly decently well blockaded. Not all the way though, which has its uh, negatives, although decently enough. We'll pull our military back. 
Uh, in the last attempt to attack the Spanish, we ended up facing unexpectedly stiff resistance. Uh, it doesn't look as though that's going to be the case this time around, although they are oddly resilient. Or maybe not resilient, they are oddly... I don't know, they're just oddly... oddly determined, we'll say, to not give in. Although I don't really expect that we're going to have to bring forces to bear against them, since we are slowly going to build up war score over time from having a, from having Yemen be uh, occupied. Now we are actually missing Socotra, which is moderately problematic. Now, let's see. We could just load an army up. Uh, we could just load this army up. It's not even a full army, so not really the biggest lost the biggest biggest loss if it doesn't work out uh, we will go ahead and declare this war against the Ottomans acquire the last state in their empire and then at this point uh, our relations are too high to just go to war against Sokoto so we will go ahead and establish a protectorate in Hejaz and just work through the rest of the Arab world Ottoman Empire is mobilizing, we should probably send our forces into their lands and just kind of clean up that whole place. And we'll bring extra forces to bear than we technically need to. And this should be a rather rapid war. Alright, and then we'll be able to just occupy all of their stuff. We'll go ahead and get all these commerce techs that should help us out in some way or another. And yes, they should be a rather quick target to just topple. And then the next war we'll be able to go against. Uh, we'll be able to just annex them outright. And that will be very nice for us. Uh, one issue though is that every time we get a crisis war, the uh, terms of the crisis would be to give back all of their cores and not just a single state at a time. So we'll have to be certain that we don't lose after after we defeat them entirely. Although obviously we've never been planning to lose. Maybe planning for the eventuality of a loss, but that's a rather different thing. Uh, we'll keep decreasing our relations with Sokoto. This does have the negative effect of lowering our ability to actually negotiate with them, or uh, in order to actually influence them into our sphere, I should say. As there is a bit of a bonus for sphering people if they like you. As it makes sense, you wouldn't really want to trust your nation in the hands of a nation that actively hates it, or anything along those lines. So it's really just to be expected. We should probably find some method of lowering our expenditures or of getting a party into office that will allow us to tax our people at a higher rate. We could just become fascists, although then that would lead to the toppling of the state, the almost inevitable toppling of the state, or at least of the monarchy. So we're going to put that off for as long as we're able, however that'll basically just be until we have to start taking loans. So let's see, 3,000 days presumably, or Maybe a thousand days. Maybe we have three years of a three thousand deficit. Uh, because let's see, it'll take us, yeah, basically a thousand days to go through three million. So yeah, we have about three or so years. I believe. That may not be the most accurate of math, however, hopefully it's accurate enough. Alright, so let's see, it's March of 1918. We were worrying about declaring war against Spain, however we managed to do that early. And everyone else, we're just going to declare war on later, June of next year for Ethiopia. Alright, we'll justify war, demand a concession out of them. Declare this war right now. And we'll just roll on in. And this should prove to be a, another very rapid sort of thing. And none of their allies came in, which is very nice. Uh, I'm not really hoping to fight the French. If we're lucky, we'll be able to just sort of avoid that. Although, well, I don't know. We've been getting fairly lucky. So it's actually been a pretty straightforward just sort of 
romping through all of these uncivilized or semi-civilized states and all the various empires that just sort of exist but not in any really truly meaningful way such as the Spanish and really only the Spanish well I guess also the Ottomans and fairly soon we'll have to fight a actually more legitimate sort of war legitimate in the sense that we might have our armies somewhat tested I'm not entirely I'm not entirely sure how quickly the enemy will be able to bring their forces to bear against us whether or not the Germans will be able to get access through Austro-Hungary which uh, would be a very real concern we should probably start moving our forces over just to be safe and we are going to have to go to war against the Russians at least one time although it doesn't look as though they're going to fall to rebellion which means they will have all of their current allies so that is definitely an unfortunate side of that and we don't really get into a stronger position by putting off uh, declaring war on them although we are obviously getting stronger every single war we fight and we are fighting quite a few wars so we might end up just going to war against Germany next uh, taking over a bit more land from Ethiopia afterwards and uh, generally just playing it by ear let's see we can decrease the opinion of somebody or other it looks like they're not actually uh, liked by anybody so that's really just anyone we choose the point is just to get rid of the notification without adding them to our sphere although there's really no reason not to add them to our sphere other than we would have to remember to get them out and honestly remembering that we need to do stuff is probably the um, my memory is the most limited resource at this point since our country is doing so well uh, what we should also do is build more military forces we're not going to build tanks or airplanes into our army just yet I do know that that makes our army considerably weaker and outdated compared to the rest of the armies of the world as they manage to get that capability and we just kind of stay back and don't hopefully though that won't really become too much of a concern as our military will ideally just maintain such a level of strength that that sort of issue doesn't come up that's not really the best plan although we do have just a considerably large force so hopefully it'll it'll prove to be a good enough plan to get us through to the end although since we are going to make a time lapse after this session or after the campaign comes to a close of just the state going on afterwards it may prove to be something that uh, will have long-term negative effects on the state hopefully though once the AI takes over for the time-lapse portion they're able to actually progress on their own alright so we'll go ahead and declare war and we'll probably just take Sokot North Cameroon uh, just so we don't split their country in any really dumb looking way or we'll go after Sokot Benin so we'll declare that war rush our armies against their own I don't believe we're going to face any true uh, difficulty other than if the French become oh we can't even declare war against the Germans yet because we hadn't hadn't gone and justify or hadn't decreased our relations so we will justify against Abu Dubai and we will decrease our relations with Oman as well as the Germans just so we get to a point fairly soon that we will be able to declare war on them when it comes to it alright and our armies are doing decently well against the Sokot armies and if the French do join then on a slightly brighter case we'll be able to march our armies through their territory to get the Spanish to finally give in the ghost or throw in the towel or however you want to say it and that should be fairly fairly positive although obviously we would prefer not to have to fight the Spanish or uh, the uh, the French to get to the Spanish ideally the Spanish will just kind of give up on their own although that doesn't really seem like it's something that's going to happen anytime soon so we'll actually be able to just march one of our armies or a couple of our armies through French territory into Spanish uh, Morocco and hopefully use that to push their war enthusiasm down enough to just sort of make peace with us and now we should be able to justify war in order to establish a protectorate out of Sokoto in the near future and we'll remember to keep decreasing relations with the Germans we'll do that two more times just to be absolutely safe we'll go ahead and support interventionism just so we're going to have more of an ability to actually 
uh, declare war, or uh, not declare war, in order to tax our people so we don't have to become fascists. Oh, Greek communists have risen up basically everywhere in the state, it looks like. So we'll go ahead and set a small number of our forces to rebel suppression. Really, at this point in the game, rebellions, unless they take the form of essentially your entire military at the same time declaring uh, some sort of revolt, unless that happens, rebellions really are not a concern. The biggest issue is that they might kill some of our units as they go to form armies, and that's honestly a pretty big inconvenience. For instance, this one army now has to be moved away if they're able to pull that off. Now we're going to get just a ton of notifications. It looks like one army, we do have one or two defeats, which means it's just going to make our armies that we're recruiting not actually look like we want them to, not be composed out of the sort of forces we want them to be composed out of. And that's honestly a pretty big annoyance. So yeah, we just kind of have to deal with that, which isn't really great. But, you know, it's just something we're going to have to deal with. So, thanks game. Not really not really looking forward to just kind of hunting down all these rebels. That's the price you pay for having an empire filled with people who aren't too enthused about it. All right, and we are just going to join together some of these smaller armies just because we're basically using them as combined forces anyway, so it doesn't really make sense uh, not to do that. Let's go ahead and remove Oman from our sphere of influence. I believe our cast is belly against Abu Dubai just finished. So we're going to be slightly non-optimal in how we proceed. And we'll declare war to establish a protectorate. And we'll just run these armies through. And we're going to we are going to turn off automatic rebel suppression for them. Now let's see, we can probably just justify against Oman right away. Once uh, once all these things clear away. Uh, let's see, we'll go ahead and imprison people just so they're conscious and not militant. Although that may not be the best long-term solution. Uh, can we justify against the Germans? No, we'll have to decrease relations one more time. So, sorry Oman. We will establish a protectorate out of you. And that gets us some of their territory in Africa, so that is nice. Yeah, a lot of armies are just being lost against all these, well, just, you know, small groups like these are being lost, which is a pretty big inconvenience, all inconveniences considered. So, yeah, I'm not too fond of that. I'm actually considerably upset, but, I mean, it really doesn't matter in most ways, three new army groups aren't likely to be the difference between the life and death of our empire. However, they're definitely just going to make further war fighting slightly less convenient. And that sucks in its own sort of way. Not really a damning sort of way, though, but definitely an inconveniencing one. The Omani Menace is coming right for us. Everyone knows. Decrease relations with the Germans. And we'll probably... Alright, cool, we have liberals in charge of our country now. That means we can tax people more, but it takes away our jingoism, and we do need our jingoism. So, sorry electoral things. We're going to just ignore the electorate. Switch ourselves back to conservative jingoists. Uh, up until the point where we eventually have to form our, or, uh, turn ourselves into, you know, fascist jingoists, and once again hoping to avoid that as long as possible. Alright, so once these wars are over, we'll be able to just completely take over the Arabian Peninsula, and that is kind of nice. Uh, we'll run these forces up through Spanish Morocco, and you would think they'd be more willing... Oh, there they go. We've acquired our Yemen. We'll move these forces back to our actual country. And we will land all of our ships at some port somewhere. We'll also expand our naval bases a little bit. Just because it's not a terrible idea to do so. 
Although we are definitely getting to the point where we will need to become fascist sooner rather than later in order to maintain some level of a budget surplus, which is not at all anything that we have right now. We should also probably gather up all these single army stacks or single brigade stacks and put them together so they can actually join into armies. And we should really do a massive overhaul of our entire nation's military at some point, although I'm not really in any great rush to do that. If we end up having trouble against... Oh, alright, uh, looks like we will be able to go after Germany now. Didn't we just get a war justification against these guys? What's going on? Oh, we don't have any any diplomatic points. Alright, so we can justify right now, and then we will declare the war next. We will go to acquire a state from them, and that state will be Bosnia. Alright, so after that, we'll declare war on Oman. And we have a decent number of troops just in the vicinity. Which is always a good thing to have if you're about to declare war. But that's just one of those blindingly obvious statements, so I really didn't need to share that with you guys. The point being, I suppose, that we're just not really in a position where we have to really worry too much about what happens with these individual wars. It's mainly just us painting the map our color. So really the most intense war we're going to have to deal with is almost certainly going to be the war against really all of the European powers that we're trying to break or trying to put into a single more or less unified war just for the sake of convenience for moving our troops around. We should also probably move some forces over into the Omani portion of Africa, just since they might not accept uh, their defeat in this war until we get there. And I don't believe the Germans actually have any colonies, which is pretty convenient for us, except for that one landlocked part of Bosnia, for whatever reason. And the reason is because we basically helped them get it just by not actually, well, I mean, we didn't directly help them get it, but we didn't stop them, and that's really probably something we should have done. We should have just uh, moved in and ensured that Yugoslavia stayed its own state instead of letting them fall to those Germanic revolutionaries, pan-German nationalists, as they were. Although you really can't predict those sorts of things that far in the future. And honestly, it is kind of odd that they would turn to the Germans. Usually, uh, if something like India were to have pan-nationalists, usually it just fires and uh, has it occur as some sort of local revolt, which just kind of pushes one local agenda over another. So it's not as though it was obvious that they would form some sort of German, well, a German state, that they would just become part of Germany proper. I mean, in retrospect, German pan-nationalists make it somewhat obvious that that was their end goal. I just would argue that it wasn't necessarily self-evident that they would actually be able to achieve it, uh, just based on how the game usually handles those sorts of things. Uh, we also have some Greek communists still sieging places out, so we'll transport some troops over there. Uh, Ethiopia is going to be a target coming up, so we'll just move some forces over to surround them. And yes, that's really all we'll need to do. Uh, we do need to go to war against the Russians at some point. It probably doesn't make the most sense for us to do that while we're fighting the rest of the world. Uh, so we'll probably do one and then the other. We'll fight Germany, then into Italy, then into Austro-Hungary, just to push further and further and hopefully get the Germans to piece us out. We may want to leave the Italian war for after we get the Germans to capitulate, so we should go Germany, Austro-Hungary, push the Germans out of the war, then push the Italians. Uh, we'll go declare war for Dalmatia then. And then when we're doing that, we'll declare war against the Russians. Although they are allied to Austro-Hungary, so it is possible that, if not entirely likely, it is possible that they will defend their Austrian allies and go to war against us. So we should move at least a, enough troops to man the border just because we don't really want to invite disaster if we don't absolutely need to. And we don't really ever absolutely need to invite disaster. So that should be a decent force to just have man the border. 
one army on each of these border provinces and then if they do actually join we could ramp it up later on and we have annexed Oman so now Greek Africa is just painted across Asia somewhat the Near East however you want to describe that and now we have a hundred and twenty something days of peace I just leaned pretty close to the microphone I've got a new microphone by the way I hope that's evident uh, it would be kind of a bummer if it wasn't since well, I don't know. It, it, I just figured it would be nice to get a new one. Hopefully it is a considerable improvement from what we once had. And makes this easier to listen to, just generally. Alright, so our army is basically getting itself into position. We have an extra engineer just standing about, as they are wont to do. Looks like some German fascists are trying to rise up. We really don't want Germany to be fascist. And that's not really a historical joke, it's just that is kind of an effective government in Victoria too, and it would kind of suck for us if they had it. Alright, uh, we should pick up all these random armies. It looks like we accidentally just dropped off a large group right there, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing since we will be going to war with Italy at some point in the somewhat distant, well, near-ish future. And once we declare war on Germany, we'll go press ourselves against the Ethiopians. And let's see. 1924, July 1921, so we'll be able to go against Germany, probably Ethiopia, and then either Persia or Austro-Hungary. Now if the Germans do get military access through Austro-Hungary, then that one kinda sucks, uh, since we're just gonna have to be dealing with a constant threat of their, in well, just a constant threat of invasions from them if they can get through, which they very well may be able to. I wouldn't be too terribly shocked. Uh, but basically the important thing is that we have a plan. Oh, Jacobin rebels just being an issue. We'll just merge these armies since we're never really going to use them as distinct units. All these troops are making their way over. It doesn't look like they'll be destroyed or too much, too significantly impeded by any of these rebel groups. So it definitely is unfortunate that we're facing this level of revolt and this frequency of revolt. Uh, I don't really think there's any great way to prevent that in the future other than by being able to pass reforms, and I don't believe that we'll be able to pass reforms unless we become fascist. Just since it doesn't seem as though our political establishment is really all that ready to make any sort of steps to prevent rebellion and I really don't want to have to turn our army constantly inward when this is really the time to be just constantly facing outward so in December we will go ahead and take on the fascist party or uh, not take on so much as just implement the actions of and let's see we need Bosnia so we'll declare war on the Germans sorry former German allies Let's plow on through your Bosnian holdings, your Bosnian state. And we'll just rush on through. Rush on through and hope for the best. We're also fighting Belgium and Sweden. I've never really particularly considered them to be all that relevant as empires in this session, in this campaign. Uh, so where did we park our navy? Just over here. We'll go use them to just block Gibraltar. We'll let the rich be upset and, rather than the poor. Just because there are less of them. And we did go ahead and set up justification against Ethiopia, so that is very good. Oh, the UK actually managed to man up and declare war against us. That makes sense that they would do so now since we're already at war with the Germans. And they probably think that this is their best opportunity to, uh, well, just contain us and our imperial ambitions and whatnot. And they're almost certainly correct about that, which is also kind of an annoying facet of this. So, where did they border us? They border us in Algeria. Uh, they also border us through client states. Doesn't look like they brought any of them in. Alright, so we might lose our Chinese holdings, that's just kind of a pain, but one that we've come to anticipate just throughout really any great war sort of scenario. 
the other great powers, since we are fighting uh, a few major powers, may see this as their opportunity to jump against us. And they would be correct. Uh, does that mean that they'll be successful? No, it just means that this is their best opportunity where they are the most likely in, uh, to succeed. So all of these new units, which we are finally getting into commission, or getting commissioned, I suppose would be more correct. Uh, we'll just start bringing them over into Asia. We'll just sort of man a sort of defense until they kind of just bleed themselves dry against our country. And we'll have to defend this whole area in case the Germans find some way of leaking through. Uh, we'll just pull back and leave the whole Moldovia, Moldavia area to be defended on its own by the Romanians. And we'll just put our forces on every other bordering province. Which actually it looks like we have more than enough troops in, area, in theater to defend. So that is positive, that's good. We'll bring this group of forces over, and if we're lucky, we'll be able to take over Gibraltar, although I wouldn't wouldn't anticipate success as being something guaranteed. We also cannot add any war goals, partially just because the war is not going well enough for us yet. Although now we are able to... Uh, now we are able to implement a fascist ruling party, so we'll go ahead and do that. Looks like we are being attacked in Gibraltar. Though so far it looks as though it's going in our favor. What are we fighting? A bunch of transport ships. So yes, that is going well. Uh, we will go ahead and put our fascist party in power. Get that jingoism. Uh, residency isn't all that great. However, you know, we've got it. It'll lower our assimilation rate, which is not great. And now we can go ahead and give our people some good some good pensions, just so they're not as upset. And then we'll just kind of pass and repeal reforms, more or less at random. And that'll be just kind of the route that our nation takes for the foreseeable future. Looks like we are doing a decent job smashing into that one British group, so that's pretty cool. If we were just getting completely wrecked by them, then that would, well, that'd be just absolutely terrible. So it's good that we are able to hold our own against the British military. It's good to discover that in a small-scale sort of conflict, we are going to have to really worry about our capability of defending ourselves as they flood into our Asiatic holdings. So we'll just man a defense in our Persian territories. Looks like we're facing a rather significant stack, and that is, of course... Oh, cool, we just got defense against gas attack. That was probably really terrible for our forces over in China, and they're probably just a lost cause, so we're not going to focus on them ever again. Alright, so what else do we need to do? Pretty much nothing. We lost some ships, so we'll go ahead and detach our most significantly damaged. And just bring them home for now. And hopefully we'll still have a considerably strong enough force that we'll be able to maintain the defense of Gibraltar and just keep out all the foreign vessels. Uh, they could just go in through our back door through Suez. Honestly, that's probably what they're going to do. Uh, the only defense we have against that is hoping that they don't. Which, as far as defenses go, isn't one. Um, so yeah, that kind of is unfortunate. Mission to Ethiopia has been slowed down, which is sad. Other than this, though, I'm actually kind of happy to have a major war, which is kind of an awful thing to say. Um, yeah, so no real moral defensing about that statement, although... Okay, yeah, no no really coming back from that. It, it does make things more interesting, though, and I am happy to have it be interesting. Uh, as it is just... It would not be very satisfying in any way if this campaign ended with us just sort of killing uncivilized armies until the end of time, essentially. And in a way that would almost kind of feel dirty if we just managed to to shimmy secretly, to, to sort of weasel our way into the end of the game. 
to weasel our way into empire. Alexander didn't weasel his way into empire. He he just charged over and attacked. He made it happen. And we're making our empire happen. Oh, East Galicia is having a crisis. We're not going to really get involved because we can't. And I'm not sure if anybody can, since a lot of people are at war. What just happened? Oh, Ukraine is now an independent state. So that's pretty cool. We can go and puppet them and then get them all of their cores, which would be quite a significant amount of land, get Romania its cores, and then we could even take over one or two different places. And that would get us access through Russian territory directly, and hopefully make it so that we just show up on the map as Greece everywhere that we are. And that, you know, petty though it may be, is still a significant goal that I have for this campaign. Oh, it looks like the Swedes of all people have managed to get military access all the way through. Uh, we'll just start bringing in our forces. Austro-Hungary declared war on Italy. That is great news for us. Uh, and it's taking us a while to get our justification against Ethiopia, which is suboptimal. And we will advance to that one mountain pass since the Romanians are already there. And we are getting reinforcements, so we should be able to hold a larger defensive line. The Russians want military access from us. It looks like they're joining in this uh, beat down on Italy. We're not going to give them access, though. Looks like we really got rid of a lot of Swedes. Sorry, Paradox Interactive. Uh, we could move forward, but the terrain is much more favor is m much more favorable. Yeah, that works. We have more favorable terrain where we're at right now, so that is something we'll just kind of hold on to. Uh, the British War of Greek Containment is falling apart, and the Germans aren't ready to make peace with us, which is understandable. Uh, one downside is it looks as though ha, those guys are pretty much doomed. Uh, one downside is the Romanians are moving forward, so their army might very well just put itself in such a bad position that they lose, and we lose some war score for battles, and also just generally their army. We can probably take over command, so we will command their units, and we'll pull them back so they're just acting in a more reasonable fashion, and we will just join them up to us. Oh, also we can go to war against Kashmir because they had a rebellion and are no longer a puppet of ours. So you know, that's not ideal, but it is something vaguely positive. Now we should also be taking more command of our economy since we do have fascists in power. And we will subsidize our factories just for now, just for the convenience of it. Uh, fascism is also pretty, pretty cool in Victoria too, because capitalists are also able to uh, invest and whatnot. We will also give the Romanians military access so they stop taking undue attrition in our lands. And it looks like the Italians are getting some early victories, although once the Russian forces just pile in that'll probably turn around just immediately. Alright, so let's get some Thotic Polymers, and then we'll just go through the rest of those techs. We should actually probably be getting our military techs up to the final sort of level. What kind of dig-in bonuses are we getting? Not the most ideal, so we'll just bring in more forces since it doesn't really hinder us in any way. And then we should probably actually just press forward. Uh, where are they going? They're retreating backwards, so that's pretty cool. They don't get any real terrain bonuses, and apparently the Romanians pushed some more forces up, so we will go and reinforce them. And we'll just still maintain this defensive sort of holding. What, did they win? How did that happen? Did we just not send forces to counter them? I suppose not. We did send forces up, or Johor did. So that's kind of weird. Not that it really matters in any great sense. Uh, we could give our people wealth-based wealth wealth-based voting, so we will do that, and hopefully just sort of encourage jingoism generally. Uh, we should be able to declare war against the Persians fairly soon in July of next year. So not really super soon. Uh, though we will justify against Austro-Hungary coming up. And we should be able to get out of war, out of the war, with the Germans fairly soon. And maybe even out of the war with the British. 
so we will advance a little bit and take back some of our territory since we are still fighting predominantly in our own land and also in British North Africa which isn't a very considerable bit of countryside all things considered all right so overall things are going decently well for us uh, let's take a look it's really going poorly for them we could add a war goal if our people would like that whatsoever and they don't so we'll just get a white piece with them and there we go so that was fairly easy actually which is pretty nice all things considered as far as things could go we want them to go more that way than any other way we will bring some forces up uh, we will let our people get slightly more liberal since that isn't really a terrible thing for us right now in this instance and yeah things are going pretty decent we'll stop taxing the rich quite so much everyone else you get to keep your taxes the middle class will also get slightly less taxes so good for you guys uh, we will go ahead and desubsidize all of our factories uh, since we do have fascists in office we could probably go ahead and build some tanks we will encourage people to work in basically all the tank related factories which is predominantly going to be one tank factories and what do tank factories need tank factories will need electric gear cars which we're already making and other things uh, let's take a look well we will build an electric gear factory since those are important we'll also build a telephone factory since that'll help out with our navy coming up and machine parts that's the one we'll build a machine parts factory in case we don't already have them and if oh we do we'll subsidize them and encourage people to work there we'll also build an airplane factory and then just to be safe we'll double up on tank and aircraft factories and then once they're built they should just automatically be subsidized since we do have a party in office that is supportive of those sorts of things then we can't declare war against the Persians or justify against them immediately. Uh, we could go against the Austrians, although at this point it seems like it may be worthwhile to just kind of watch them collapse. Ooh, Italy is allied to Ukraine, which is somewhat interesting. I don't really think they would join them in defense. We could justify against Kashmir. I do want to do that before the game ends though we don't really have any necessary reason to do that right now. Uh, so we could just go against Austro-Hungary. We may as well do this now since, worst case, we're going to have to fight them and then piece them out and then fight the Russians five years down the road, so it's good that we get this out of the way. And then after we take over Croatia, we might go after Slavonia, and after that we'll probably just be taking over territory for our clients. It looks like the British are at war with the Chinese Empire. Who declared that war? British did. Okay, interesting. Well, we're going to hope for the success of the Chinese. We could give them war subsidies, so we will. And they are a fascist dictatorship, which is in no way surprising. Uh, in the long run, if we support them against the British, what could conceivably occur is that they'll take over Greek China from us. Honestly, I'd probably just give it up to them since... Uh, I don't really want Greek China, to be honest. It was great for us early on, but now it's just kind of a weird thing to have at the absolute edge of the world. And there's no real reason to have it. Quite frankly. We'll go ahead and switch our focus over to clerks. We're really getting a very good... A uh, very good bit of industry. We're doing very well. Kind of better than I had anticipated, to be honest. And that is actually very satisfying. So I don't believe we'll actually become first rank great power, although, you know, the potential is definitely there. Uh, truce with Egypt until 1922. So that's that's good. That's that's achievable. We can achieve some good objectives by the time that's ready. And then we don't really need to go to war against Spain or anybody else. We will pile up more of our forces. Uh, even bringing some considerable numbers of our African forces, which we, look, we can actually just kind of bring over directly, so that's kind of neat, although more than a little weird. We can just march these forces through all of Europe. Not going to complain, though. 
Uh, we'll let our people be more conservative rather than reactionary since you can actually work with conservatives but not so much reactionaries. And we are probably going to get a fascist coup at some point in the near future. Uh, we can also build more armies, so we'll do that. You'll notice we aren't switching over to aircraft and tanks yet, simply because the factories aren't really complete, and it would just kind of be a pain to have to deal with armies that are only half created, which is almost certainly the way that that would go for at least the foreseeable future. So let's go ahead and just build up these regular armies, and then in about a year or two we should be ready. Uh, let's go ahead and look at trade and see if we could conceivably even get tanks. No one's producing tanks. People are producing airplanes though, so that is good. We'll go ahead and just buy a ton of airplanes. And that'll probably put us in a considerable deficit for quite a while. Uh, we will also buy telephones, and we'll buy automobiles. So this will definitely ensure that we're in a just horrible deficit for a while. Although one that I think is worth it. Uh, do we need 2,000 units of automobile and 2,000 units of airplane and 2,000 units of radio and telephone and probably machine parts and electric gear? No, we don't need any of this. Although it definitely makes things easier for us in the future. So it is good to have, I would say. Although, look at that, we're already in debt, so we'll go ahead and just tax everybody at 100% for as long as it takes to buy all these goods. And then we're going to have to pay off quite a few loans, since we are actually going considerably in debt to do this. Uh, we did give ourselves a national bank, though, so that's, uh, that's very positive in its own way. And, alright, are we still justifying a war? We are justifying against Austro-Hungary. Are we actually... Oh, we are at war with Ethiopia, and they just kind of flooded across the border since we weren't actually fighting them. So, that's my bad. Uh, we'll go ahead and give our people just a better electoral method, although we don't really have any plans on following through with any of those electoral reforms since we're just going to keep putting the fascists in office, uh, basically until it stops being the best choice ever, and that really will never happen. Alright, we're still losing a little bit of money, although nowhere near as much as previously. The Russians are fighting against the Italians, the Austrians still have a considerable military force, the Russians also have a considerable military force, and the Italians still as well. So I'm not really sure where all their armies are. Looks like we finally managed to get all of those goods, and we are about 1.7, no, no, 170,000 money in debt, paying 100 off of that every month or every day as interest, which isn't great, but we are making a lot of money, so it's not the worst thing in the world. And once we justify our war against Austria, we should be able to just wheel around and focus on the Persians. And we're going to wait however long it takes uh, for us to be able to declare war on Persia, just since we need more lands from them more rapidly than anyone else. Our people are nearly jingoistic enough for us to pass uh, to ask for another war goal in a single war. So that could be very helpful. We'll try to be at war with both Austria, Hungary, and Persia simultaneously. That way we will be able to add Slavonia as well as if the Russians join, add Armenia, and also add a second state request from the Persians. And if we're able to do that, then we won't have to worry about running out of time as, uh, well, we'll just be in a position where it's not really, where time won't really be such a limiting factor, although it is still deeply limiting at the moment. And we'll keep just moving all of our forces over, oh, oh, wow, so, yeah, they did manage to just kind of go around us, which is inconvenient, and stopped all of our armies from going where we asked them to go, so we're just getting a bunch of one stacks of troops built up, all throughout the empire, which is inconvenient, although not as inconvenient as if they were all killed, and also, you know, not as much of a tragedy as if they were all killed. So we'll gather all these forces up, all throughout the empire, and just bring them over. We're also getting our navy sent over, so they'll smash into those Swedes. 
and hopefully just clear them out of the uh, out of the strait. Get us into a more victorious sort of place. Now I'm not entirely sure what sort of forces, what sort of naval forces they have there, but it doesn't look like anything. Just some transport ships and one or two decent boats. So not optimal, but also not really a tragedy. And in seven days we'll be able to justify against the Persians. Well, yeah, actually, mm, nah, about a month. So the most important thing is that we do clear these straits before we declare war on Austria, otherwise we could face a considerable inconvenience. The Germans will still not accept peace, and we still cannot add another war goal. Although there's really nothing I want from the Germans, other than that one place that we're already after. So in a way it's sort of a moot point. Uh, we should be getting these army techs, we should have done that much, much earlier. And I just never did. Alright, with that, the strait is cleared. We'll go pursue them. Get this army together. Oh, it's later in July, so we can justify a war, and we will. We'll go for a place in the sun, since it's quicker. And we should be able to add another war goal. And that should work out very well. With those two things in order, we will be in a very nice spot for our objectives. Now let's go ahead and split this army up a little bit. Alright, and in just a moment we'll declare war on Austria-Hungary. Austria-Hungary. Looks like the Russians are getting a ton of rebels, which is pretty cool. Are any of them going for their capital? Doesn't look like it. And we should really probably uh, make sure that we have forces on the Russian border, just in the eventuality that they do declare war on us or do actually join their allies, which is fundamentally kind of the same thing at this moment. So I'll just bring everybody over. Uh, we will leave some forces against the Persians, and we'll pull some troops away from Sokoto since that's not really a relevant front at the moment. And some forces away from Ethiopia for the same reason. Get them all brought over to the Persian frontier. Hopefully the Russian armies will be distracted enough by their rebellions. Doesn't look like any rebellions are occurring near their capital. And that's a bit of a bummer, but not really a terrible one. The Germans will not accept peace. We will go ahead and declare war in order to take Croatia. Uh, let's see. Austria wants Istria and to humiliate Italy, and it doesn't look like that's... Actually, yeah, no, it doesn't look... They want Istria. Wait a minute. Okay, so the Italians want... No, they don't want anything. They haven't added any war goals. So the Briti or the Russians and the Austrians are going after them for those things. We'll declare war and try to take Croatia. That'll be 55 war score right there. Will the Russians join? Yes. Okay, that's not optimal but it's also hopefully not a terrible disaster. In fact, it is kind of a positive thing in a few ways. And the Russians are, of course, fighting basically a civil war, so we'll just kind of run our forces in and try to get some decent battlefield positions against them while they're just facing all of this domestic chaos. Poland declared war on Austria-Hungary. Makes some sense. Can't really fault them for that. And do we get a gas attack bonus against the Russians? We do, so that's great. They're backwards enough that I'm not really too concerned with their ability to just sort of counter us in any great military sense. Although they could just be very problematic with just the scope of their forces that they can bring to bear against us, and just the number of frontiers that they could come against us on. So we will go ahead and rush, take Armenia... And then we'll try to add all of the additional war goals that we would want all simultaneously, and that should be that should make this war uh, very much worth engaging in. So we're just going to rush forward right now, just generally, and we should basically be able to knock Austria-Hungary out of the war with relative ease. I think I don't think them or the Russians are really in much of a fighting place. 
At least not at the moment, and probably not for the foreseeable future. Uh, one big risk, though, is that another great power will declare war on us. Although at this point we are at war with all of the relevant ones, essentially, except for the Italians, but that'll probably come in due time. And our people are considerably less encouraged to jingoism at the moment than we would like. Though that will hopefully change in the near future. So we'll probably just take this episode until... Well, I was going to say until our Cassus Belly against the Persians is ready, but that'll be another 80 days. And I don't really want to wait that long since we are already at an hour. That being said, our war against the Persians is already... Let's see, it's already going slightly well. It's going in our favor, so we could add a war goal if we were capable of it. And that is a nice place to be. Uh, we're going to want to get it to the point where the Russians would be willing to peace out on their own, as we are going to hopefully take over one of their states as well. It'll just be a matter of getting our people slightly more jingoistic, and I don't think that'll be too difficult. Uh, what we could do is start an election, and that might get us a positive jingoism event. Uh, so I'll just do that now before we forget. So we will hold an election, and then we'll probably just end this episode right here. We'll move our armies forward somewhat just because that's a good idea and we may as well just make it as easy as possible for me to hop into this when we start up next time. And yeah, we'll just kind of hurdle our forces deeper into the Austrian homelands. And that'll be a good place to come back. And uh, once we justify against the Persians and make that happen, we'll probably go against the Italians in order to get Dalmatia. And so we should be able to get Croatia, Slavonia, Armenia, Persian, Turkmenia, and maybe Khorasan, all in this one war. And then we'll only have to go to war against the Persians twice more, uh, once for this state in probably 1927, and then once for their capital in, say, 1933. Uh, let's take a look. Oh, um, hmm. Okay, so we're going against the Persians, then the Italians, then the Egyptians, and then the Spanish. One last time, but the Spanish will be later. And then we also have Ethiopia and Sokoto, but I think it's really coming together to the point that we will be able to get this all resolved. Uh, Kashmir we need to bring into our, into our orbit, actually directly annexing them more likely than anything else. And let's double check how the British war is going. It's actually going very, very positively for the British, which is unfortunate for China. I'm not really sure how they're pulling that off. Uh, they might just have armies roving about being successful, and that kind of sucks, but it's really not to be... It's somewhat to be expected, I guess we could say. At any rate, thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, have a great day. When we come back, we're going to keep battling all of the powers of Europe. Uh, we might get to a point where the German armies start directly intervening against us, or we might get them to peace out. It really remains to be seen how that actually will go. Uh, and yeah, hopefully the election and just pressing popular reforms will combine in order to get us up to that 7% Jacobism, or Jacobism, uh, Jingoism, which will allow us to add all of these war goals simultaneously. Uh, the trick is it doesn't update jingoism until the day after you add a war goal or do some sort of other militant action. So if we do that all at once, which will just take almost all of our diplomatic power, we should just be able to take all of those things that we want simultaneously. Alright, I'll stop talking now. Uh, we have a lot to look forward to as we move forward. Have a great day.